This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp and Death Battle! Fight! Galactus, Devourer of Worlds. And Unigron, Almighty Chaos Bringer. That's right, it's the day we've all been waiting for. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Boomstick, what is the nature of evil? Oh, it's three and a half beers too early for that kind of question, Wiz. No, seriously, is the wolf that hunts the hare evil? What about the bear that kills the wolf or the man that slays the bear? Is that evil or nature? Perhaps this question was on Gallon of Ta's mind as he hurtled toward the end of infinity. I'm pretty sure the question on his mind was, how do I turn this goddamn spaceship around? Eons ago, the planet Ta was a paradise, the most advanced civilization the universe had ever known. Too bad the universe was coming to an end. I hate it when that happens. The Ta and scientist Gallen watched as the rest of his race ignominiously perished and decided to die gloriously on his own terms. By flying a ship into the sun, just like great grandpappy Boomstick, the crazy old coot. But instead of being vaporized on contact like great grandpappy Boomstick, Gallen got bitten by a radioactive god. As the last living thing left before the universe's end, Gallon was visited by the sentience of the multiverse, who merged with him as part of a cosmic cycle of death and rebirth. As the old multiverse died, a new one was born, and the scientist Gallon was no more. In his place was a being of untold power, the ravager of galaxies, Galactus. Well, despite looking like a masochist giant purple vibrator, g Dog here is one of the strongest beings in all of Marvel, baby. And there's only one thing he wants to do. Eat friggin' worlds! Galactus is so unbelievably, mind-meltingly powerful that strong doesn't really begin to describe him. Just being near him will begin to warp your perception of reality. In truth, he isn't even really a physical being with a soul anymore, but composed of energy itself. The Power Cosmic. Basically, your all-purpose space god magic that no good almighty ass whooping god can go without. Sure, he can use it to blast your ass to unholy smithereens, but it's a lot more flexible, too. Described as being in touch with every other living thing at once, the Power Cosmic allows one access to a near-infinite pool of knowledge and the ability to sense danger ahead of time. I don't think there's a lot for him to be afraid of. He can manipulate matter, read and control the minds of gods, and teleport entire galaxies across the universe. The Power Cosmic allows him fundamental control over life itself manipulating souls, creating new life forms from nothing, and even resurrecting the dead. And because his body is composed of energy, he can't really be hurt in the traditional physical sense. This allows him to grow or shrink his body with seemingly no limit and alter his appearance. Wait, wait, wait. He chooses to look like that? His physical appearance matches the species observing him. So a human sees a human galactus, a scroll, a scroll galactus, and so on. Oh, so it's just like how I see the world. What are you staring at? What matters most to me in the world. Awesome. No, not awesome. Very not awesome. At least as far as Galactus is concerned, since witnessing his approach is itself the end of the world. You would only have enough time to pray to your paltry gods before Galactus consumed your entire planet, absorbing its energy into himself, then moving on to his next meal. Man, I guess his costume is appropriate because he sounds like a total dick. Like, come on, man, you watched your whole planet die. Now you're gonna go around the universe doing the same thing? It's not entirely his fault. Galactus's power is so immense that the only thing that can sustain him is the consumption of entire worlds. Without this constant feeding, he would perish, just as humans would without consuming plants or other animals. Kinda like how I hunt squirrels, cause I hate each and every one of them. No, no, categorically the exact opposite, actually. Galactus isn't vengeful or cruel. If he could avoid any unnecessary death, he would. But just as the universe is bound by the laws of physics, Galactus is bound by his hunger. And that hunger has put him in conflict with some of Marvel's other heaviest hitters, like Odin and the Phoenix Force. Galactus's fight with the Other and the Scryer got so intense, they threatened the entire infinite multiverse just as a side effect of the battle. While Galactus himself can comfortably cross countless light years in seconds, some of of these beings are more like abstract concepts than actual living things. 
many of which operate outside of linear time. Like this alien bug dude who tried to use Galactus' energy to destroy two whole universes. Even after being drained by him, he still nuked three whole star systems before getting a snack. Should he somehow be threatened by beings beyond even the scope of his power, Galactus crafted a device to solve all of his problems, the ultimate nullifier. In case that name isn't obvious enough, it's a teeny tiny weapon that destroys anyone you think of. It doesn't just destroy them, it destroys everything. The entire multiverse is eradicated, then recreated without the target. An extremely roundabout way of winning, but it works. That's exactly what happened when Galactus used it on the abstract god of destruction, Abraxas. He destroyed the god of destroying things with a Happy Meal toy. It's like my therapist said. Great things come in small packages. And the nullifier was key to Galactus' first great defeat upon his inevitable arrival on Earth. When that pesky Reed Richards managed to get his stretchy hands on the thing, Galactus finally backed down and spared the planet. Which makes no practical sense. The ultimate nullifier is a part of Galactus himself. It uses his own power. He can summon it at any time and even escape its effects by hiding in a pocket dimension. It even had the safety on. Maybe he was just bored. After billions of years of cosmic genocide just to survive, I'm pretty sure Galen forgot what it meant to be mortal. Perhaps that was the true evil all along, the slow death of Galen's humanity. Because what could be more terrifying than a being that sees everything and everyone you know and love as nothing more than his next meal? This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Wiz, it's getting to be the holiday season again, and I just know Mama Boomstick is finally getting me the new dune buggy I've been drooling over. What's gonna be stuffed in your stocking? A couple undiscovered elements would be nice, but the holidays are also about giving gifts to yourself. Maybe that means giving yourself a break during this busy month or treating yourself when you have the time. And in anticipation of a new year, sometimes that means therapy. Therapy can be super helpful year round, but especially during this season. The holiday blues are no joke. If you're thinking about starting therapy, consider giving BetterHelp a try. What's great is that it's totally online, so it's super flexible with your schedule and convenient. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And if it isn't a perfect match, switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DeathBattle today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DeathBattle. In the beginning, before heaven and earth, before light and dark, there was Unicron. Created by the formless, primordial being known as the One to explore the fledgling multiverse, Unicron instead decided to consume everything. Dude, come on! Bad Unicron! Bad God! Bad! The One decided to split Unicron into two beings, one of order and hope known as Primus, and the other of chaos and evil known as Unicron. Again! Like all good sibling rivalries, they pushed each other's shit in over the fate of all existence. That is, until the goody little two-shoes Primus tricked his bro into imprisoning their souls in giant asteroids. Classic sibling prank. For me, it was the dryer. Primus terraformed his asteroid into what would later be known as the planet Cybertron, while Unicron did something... different. Yeah, he turned his planet into a planet that eats other planets! Not only that, it can change its form into a giant badass robot Satan! He's literally the first Transformer! And with this new body, Unicron would travel the cosmos consuming planet after planet and universe after universe. Not necessarily because of any hunger or need, but because Unicron is the physical embodiment of death and destruction. He is literally programmed to destroy everything. God's gotta do what a god's gotta do. And good luck trying to fight back! Uni's robot body comes with a tractor beam, eye lasers, fire breath, a chest cannon, and an antibody system in case anyone tries to pull a Drax on him. Unicron can mentally dominate an entire race of beings, erase things from existence, warp the fabric of space and time, and even manipulate matter itself. So even if his big robot body is damaged or destroyed, he can repair it like any split, or even send his spark out to find a new host. Essentially the Transformers version of a soul, Unicron's spark is immensely powerful and produces its own energy source. 
Dark Energon. Unicron is so evil that he can literally turn his bad dude energy into weapons of mass destruction, like unholy blades or planet-busting lasers. This Dark Energon will corrupt any that consumes it, turning them into a puppet of Unicron himself. It's also obviously the opposite of regular Energon, which is created by Primus and what fuels the Transformer race. So Unicron basically runs on the opposite of life. If he's death as a big robot, can he even be killed? Not by any conventional means. Even the destruction of his spark isn't guaranteed to end him. He will continue to exist as a necessary force that drives the cosmos. Anytime he's destroyed, he will appear again in a new universe. In fact, almost every Unicron you've seen in movies, TV, and comics are the same Unicron. Unicron is a literal force of nature. You can't reason with a hurricane that hates you. All you can do is see it and get the hell out of the way. But this hurricane is never gonna stop until you and everyone you know is D.E.D. -E dead. His mere presence drove an entire planet insane. I was trying to be poetic before, but uh, this, this is what evil is. Incomprehensible, undeniable, inescapable. You can't even wait him out. He is unbound by the concept of linear time. The Chaos Bringer is so powerful, his mere presence wrecks the space-time continuum and can erase galaxies from existence just by strolling by. To be clear, it isn't the force he's generating by moving that destroys things, it's his existence. His mere being is so overwhelmingly evil that the fabric of space-time cannot fathom Unicron's presence. Holy f dude! No wonder he was able to devour nearly a quarter of the entire multiverse, one universe at a time. Estimates for the size of the Transformers multiverse vary from over 15 quadrillion universes to an infinite number of universes, branching timelines, and planes of existence. And who better to portray a being who brings death to the universe than the man who gave birth to modern cinema? A final role fitting for an artist so much larger than life. Or deeply ironic that it's a feature-length toy commercial. Yeah, the Transformers movie has always been celebrated for its excellence. I say. Despite that unbelievable power, the Chaos Bringer's almighty rampage through reality has been halted a number of times, usually due to the matrix of leadership, the essence of Primus himself, and the embodiment of all hope and light in the universe. Are you telling me that Robo Satan was defeated by the power of friendship? Forget beer! I'm gonna need some of that shit going straight into the vein! As the abstract idea of evil actualized, any notion of goodness is directly antithetical to his being. As in comprehensible to Unicron as he is to us. But despite the best efforts of heroic Transformers like Optimus Prime, Unicron has always returned from the smoldering ashes of defeat and risen to threaten reality again. It's his very nature. Such as the time a united armada of Autobots, Decepticons, and an entire people created from his cells, the Minicons, tried to destroy him once and for all. They actually succeeded in killing him, until Galvatron's hatred for Optimus brought Unicron back to life. Because challenging Unicron means challenging evil itself, destroying destruction itself, an impossible paradox. You can't kill Unicron because killing is literally what Unicron is. So what does that mean for us? Every petty act of violence, every war, every cruelty, every death battle gives Unicron life, the life he'll use to kill us all. We are culpable in our own annihilation. Unicron's not just some comic book villain. He's all there is and all there will be. He was there at the beginning and he'll be there at the end. He's a law of physics. He's as inevitable as your dying breath. Jesus, now you got me scared. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by Death Battle. That's called Synergy, right, Wiz? By popular demand, Death Battle the Game is finally back and available for pre-order this December. Ever wanted to live out your very own Death Battle with you as the combatant? Of course you have! Death Battle the Game is a fast-paced head-to-head card and dice game where players, well, battle to the death. Are you deadly enough to win a death battle? The first player to eliminate all of their opponent's cards wins. Who will be the last one standing? With 100 weapon, armor, and skill cards, there are tons of options for character creation. Oh, and who could forget 50 custom dice? If you know someone who just can't get enough of the pulse-pounding battles between fiction's deadliest characters, and sometimes its silliest, this is the perfect gift. 
Pre-order your copy of Death Battle the Game this December and ring in the new year with your favorite internet show brought to life. Go to store.roosterteeth.com to pre-order your copy and get ready, cause it's time for a death battle! All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for the death battle you've been asking for forever! As all things must, your world has come to an end. Halt! This planet is mine to consume. So saith Galactus, destroyer of worlds. Be gone. Thus decrees Unicron, Chaos Bringer. and Unicron were beings who could manipulate reality itself and do basically anything. Older than the universe, unbound by time, they had each other matched in a lot of ways. So it ultimately came down to which of them was more powerful. 
Both could threaten an entire infinite multiverse, but Unicron could only do so over time, devouring them one by one. While Galactus' battle with the Scryer and the other threatened to destroy the entire Marvel multiverse as just a side effect. Not to mention, Galactus tussles with cosmic beings like himself all the time. While Unicron is usually the top dog in Transformers, he's a big fish in a relatively small pond relative to Marvel at least. That might sound better for Unicron at first, but it means he has way less experience than Galactus in full-on fights against dudes his size. And while Unicron has used Dark Energon to infect and corrupt other beings in the past, Galactus technically doesn't have a soul thanks to his cosmic rebirth from Galen. And he's fended off mental attacks before, so there's no real reason to think that would work here. And as lame as it is, the ultimate nullifier is just really, really overpowered. Despite Unicron being able to survive the destruction of his spark, the ultimate nullifier is significantly more thorough. Consider the time it was used against Abraxas, a being that embodied the abstract concept of the multiverse's destruction. Hmm, sounds like somebody you know? Even against someone like that, the good old Oli Nulli had no problem erasing him from reality, and the same would happen to Unicron. While Galactus could always hide in that pocket dimension, just as he escaped the nullifier before. Unicron was an insanely terrifying threat, but Galactus had the power, experience, and arsenal to ultimately annihilate him. If you thought Galactus was going down in this fight, you were Unicron. The winner is Galactus. Season 10's done, but Season 11 is on the way. Thanks so much for watching, and a special thanks to our channel members for being champions this year. Get ready for more Death Battle in 2024.